If you want to know how you build a race truck and you don't pay for it, don't miss this video. Today we are going on board on the Understorp race truck in Sweden. Let's go! Hello and welcome to this video. Today Understorp on board and a bit of history of this funky truck. Understorp Raceway is located in the town of Understorp in Gislaved municipality about 80 km from Gothenburg. Understorp Raceway features a combination of the 4 km long race circuit and an airport runway which is using a part of the race track. So Understorp Airport is not always available due to activity on the race circuit. An idea of a race track and airport in one facility was born in the summer of 1965 when three local racers, Sven Smoky Asberg, Eik Bengtsson and Bertil Senel, I hope I pronounce it correctly, wanted to have a race track for test rides. The first idea was to build a short one kilometer and a half track, but then they decided to ask local industrialists to help them build a longer truck with an airport. This would also mean that they would pay for it. An airport would help their isolated town to have a daily connection with Stockholm and will bring prosperity to the local community. That's how they sold it to them, so that's how they paid for it. In 1966, an idea became a project. Two years later, a project became a race track. The race track was open in 1968. The layout of the race circuit was designed by engineer Holger Eriksson, advised by famous Swedish racer Joe Bonnier. The original 4 km circuit was built on marshlands had eight slightly banked curves with constant radius and a long back straight on which was the airfield runway. Unusually, the pit area was separated from the start-finish line. The pits were between turns 5 and 6. This because the straight over there was too short for meeting regulations. This also means that cars would do half a lap to get to the start-finish straight. The Scandinavian Raceway circuit was officially open on June 16, 1968 with an international sports car race, won by Joe Bonnier in a Lola T70 Chevrolet. The circuit is also noteworthy because it was the site of the first and only win of two unconventional F1 cars, the six-wheeled Tyrrell P34 in 1976 and the infamous Brabham Fun Car in 1978 by Niki Lauda. Even more unique were the original pits configuration where cars would enter through one side and exit through the other. Amazing. Unlike most race tracks of the world, Tilke did not destroy this track and its layout is exactly the same as the original with the only changes being made to the pits enter and exits. You could go there today and measure your lap times with Jackie Stewart Tyrrell of 1973 or the Brabham Fun Car of 1978. They were on the exact same layout. After some minor modifications were made to the pit lane area in 1972, Sven Asberg announced that he has a contract for the Formula 1 Swedish Grand Prix at Understorp from 1973. The arrival of Formula 1 coincided with the rise of Swedish ace Ronnie Peterson, who was an F1 vice champion in 1971, with March and moved to Lotus for the 1973 season. And also Gunnar Nielsen as another Swedish driver. He won a Grand Prix. Although the circuit is located far from big cities and there were no sleeping facilities, the crowd was big at the inaugural F1 Swedish Grand Prix, which took place on June 17, with more than 50,000 spectators around the track. 
Ronnie Peterson delighted home fans with pole position and led for most of the race, losing a victory on the penultimate lap to Danny Holm. At the 1976 Swedish Grand Prix, we saw the second Swedish victory for Jody Schechter, but the race was marked by the first and only victory of a six-wheel F1 car, the Tyrol P34. Schechter was the fastest qualifier and converted his starting position into a victory in front of his teammate Patrick Depaille in another P34. Niki Lauda completed the podium in a Ferrari. Two years after a victory of unique Tyrrell's six-wheeler, another unique and controversial car triumphed at the 1978 Swedish Grand Prix. It was the Brabham BT46B Alfa Romeo, so-called fan car. The main feature was a large fan which drew air through the engine water radiator which was mounted horizontally over the engine. The fan also took ground effect to a higher level by sucking air from under the car creating a partial vacuum and an enormous amount of downforce. With such a car, Niki Lauda easily won the race. But the controversial car never raced again. And contrary to what most people say, it was not banned. Brabham simply stopped using it. Ronnie Peterson was in a fight for the 1978 championship title, winning two races and scoring five more podiums with Lotus until the unfortunate Italian Grand Prix at Monza in September, in which he was fatally injured. The death of Swedish racing hero Ronnie Peterson, but also a death of Gunnar Nilsson in October from cancer, decreased an interest for races in Sweden and the Swedish Grand Prix was not a part of the F1 Championship in 1979 although I found this poster for that race. In 1993, the Understop Racing Club went to a bankruptcy caused by problems and a financial loss following a 24-hour sports car race. The club overcame problems and reorganized itself as the new Understop Racing Club, continuing to run the Scandinavian Raceway. In recent years, Understorp is hosting Swedish and regional races in different racing disciplines, from single-seaters and sports cars to touring cars. The main event is the round of the Scandinavian Touring Car Championship. In June 2018, STCC event was an opportunity to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first race which took place exactly 50 years ago, on June 16. The first ever F1 race at Understorp took place on June 17, 1973, while the last Swedish Grand Prix was held in June 17, 1978. So there are two more anniversaries to celebrate. Let's go now on board with Ronnie Peterson in 1972. Remember, this was before the first F1 race, so enjoy. Sen är det dags att bromsa här vid 100 km och gå ner på trean. Sen går vi in i en hästskoliknande kurva, väldigt lång kurva, där vi kommer att hålla treans växel igen. För innan kurvan är slut så måste vi börja bromsa för, för denna kurva bygger den långsammaste kurvan där vi använder tvåans växel. Sen kommer trean i och eh, trean ligger i hela vägen in till den, denna kurva där också treans ligger i runt. Och här går fyran växel i och så småningom femman. Vi, är, vi når en toppfart omkring 270-280 km i slutet av denna raken. Sedan går vi in i den eh, 
snabbaste kurvan vi växlar aldrig ner någon gång utan vi ligger kvar i femman. Jag ska tippa att vi går runt hem med 200-210 km. Och där hoppas man ska vara först. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Comment if you have something to say or ask. And subscribe for more videos like this. I see you in the next video. Take care.